Okay guys, this is lesson number eight, Transport in the Floor. This is an HL only lesson on section 9.2. So we're going to be talking about phloem over two classes. Today's class we're focusing more on the structure of phloem and we're going to connect it and compare it with xylem as well today. Um, we'll be focusing on how this actually works, the process and steps of this kind of transportation more next class. So what we're focusing on today is more about the structure function relationships in phloem sieve tubes, we're identifying some of phloem in the different images, and we're going to be talking about the kind of structure. All this stuff of the process, we're going to focus on that after you have the structure down. Okay, so first thing first, we're going to talk about vascular and non-vascular plants. So this is a term that you should be familiar with from topic five. We talk about the four plant kingdoms. We talked about these four here, the terrestrial plant kingdoms. And a major dividing line between different plant kingdoms is if they are vascular or non-vascular plants. What does the term vascular mean? It should be familiar to you from your reading. So vascular is, means it has vascular tissue, which is made of xylem and phloem. So all these three plants, the ferns, the pines, and the flowering plants, these three phyla, they all have vascular tissue, whereas the mosses and algae do not. Now, take a minute and think about how these structures, these different plants differ based on the fact that some do have, have vascular tissue and some do not. There's something fundamentally different about those that do not have vascular tissue. The big difference here is size. Right? Like algae are very, very small, microscopic, and mosses, the biggest ones might get to be maybe three or four centimeters tall, very small for the most part. And the big reason for that is they don't have enough, um, they're not able to transport water, minerals, sugars around the plant. So they can't get very big at all because they don't have the structures to communicate and move those things around. They move around. Whereas these plants include, you have Pine trees, you have flowering trees, you have small flowering plants, all of these plants are much larger and allowed to transport different things around. Okay, let's talk about the structure of phloem. So we have two types of cells that make up phloem, just like two types of cells make up xylem. The names of them, of course, are different. So the main two ones here are sieve tube elements. Okay, and they are mostly hollow cells. They are alive but they're mostly hollow they, because they need to be able to move water and sugar and things around inside them. And then those cells also have a structure called plasmodesmata, and the plasmodesmata are for lateral movement of uh, things. So these little holes this side here, those are plasmodesmata. It allows the, <coughs> excuse me, it allows the tissue uh, to allow for movement of water and sugars and the flow of itself to move between laterally as well as vertically. Okay, and then attached to every um, sieve tube element is what's called a companion cell. And the companion cells are much smaller. If you look over here, this is the companion cell right there. Okay, whereas this is the sieve tube. It's much smaller because its job is just to kind of keep the sieve tube alive. All of the alive, all the met metabolic processes that would normally happen in the plant are going to be done in the companion cell, and very limited has to be done in the sieve tube, because the sieve tube needs to be mostly hollow. So they work together to allow this to happen. Um, just like in xylem, it's moving around of water and other, other things, in this case, mostly sugar. But unlike in xylem, it can move vertically as well, up and down, as well as side to side, so many different directions based on where the plant is trying to send energy, information, any of those things. Okay, so the function of phloem. Phloem transports organic molecules in plants, and organic molecules are a huge different variety of different kinds of organic molecules. You just take a minute and think about how many different organic molecules can you think of that be moving around plants through the phloem. Okay, well the first one is sugars, of course. And sucrose is the most common sugar in plants. Why is sucrose the most common? It's the final product of synthesis, so there that would be why. Okay, we also have movement of 
amino acids, hormones, and small RNA molecules. We'll talk more about hormones when we talk about plant growth later on in this unit, but for now, I'll just mention that they're moved around with the phloem. Okay, um, what, so if that's what phloem moves around, what function or functions can we say phloem does in a plant? Well, it's going to allow the plant to distribute sugars from where they're produced, where they're needed, either for growth or for storage. It's going to allow the plant to communicate with itself with using hormones, similar to how our body communicates with itself, or what things need to get done where. All of those things are important components of how this works. Okay, so key idea, phloem structure has evolved to perform its function with maximum efficiency by removing most organelles and relying on a companion cell for metabolism. Okay, so take a minute now to compare and contrast xylem and phloem. Make a t-chart like this in your notebook, uh, or wherever you're taking notes, your computer that works as well. And I want you to compare, use the image to help you, use your notes to help you, uh, fill in these components of the table. Just pause the video, fill it in, and we'll look at the answers. Okay, so hopefully you got this answer, that we have dead cells in xylem and living cells in phloem, that the thickness of the cell wall is quite different, very thick and rigid in xylem, and much thinner and a little more bendy in um, phloem, which makes sense because xylem ends up being a big structural support, almost like a skeletal kind of support for large plants. Um, there's no cytoplasm in xylem, of course, because they are not living. And there's cytoplasm lining the phloem, but not very much there. Um, xylem is impermeable, whereas phloem is permeable, which means, of course, that we can have that horizontal movement, as well as the vertical movement always going to be happening in xylem. Um, xylem transports water and minerals. Phloem transports food, as well as hormones and RNA. It's going to going to transport things to the leaves mostly water minerals, all water minerals, which is flow to move things from the leaves to any growing part of the plant that could be another new leaf that's growing. It could be roots, it could be branches, it could be the trunk, um, and any kind of storage organs to put away sugar for um, a rainy day, basically. The direction of flow is different, upwards only in xylem, whereas up and down and set aside as well in phloem. And the tissue for xylem also has our fibers to help make it stronger. And phloem also has the companion cells to do the metabolic process required to keep the vessel element, the C tube element, sorry, um, alive. Okay, so at this point, if you were in class or campus, I would get you guys to um, design a little kind of mini inquiry lab into how um, the how celery, how what facts affect the way that water moves up celery. It's more focusing on the xylem, but it's a good way to introduce the two xylem and phloem. Um, so what, when are you going to actually be able to do this? Like if you have celery or you can get celery and food coloring, do it. It's a great lab. It's really visual. It really helps kind of cement your understanding. If you can't get it, that's, that's okay. Um, but you need to try and do this kind of plan out how you would do it. Maybe Google some answers and see what kind of results you would find for your experiment. Um, so think about what conditions are going to affect the speed that water moves through your plant. So you want to see what's going to make water move faster or slower, and then create those different conditions. So I've had students do this where they remove all the leaves, um, maybe they cut holes in something, maybe they change the size of the stem, maybe they remove light, add light, put it in a windy spot, put it in a sheltered spot, all of these various and sundry things you can do. And then the food coloring just allows you to see how the water is going to move up the plant. So you can see how quickly it moves based on that. If you're going to do this, I recommend using blue, purple, or red food coloring. Yellow doesn't show up, or green, of course, doesn't show up clearly enough to see it easily. So I wouldn't use those colors. You have to do a question hypothesis regardless of whether you're actually doing it or not. And then um, look at your results, either by doing it or just by um, Googling different options in the lab. It's been very commonly, so I'm sure you can find some different answers online. Okay, so before we do our bigger kind of task for today, for this particular lesson, you need to understand the difference between monocots and dicots. Um, so these are two terms that the IB used to require students to know, 
You no longer have to know them, but you'll find when you're doing any sort of research on botany, they often still use these terms to differentiate, differentiate between different kinds of plants. So the monocots come to the fact that the, their seed has one carbidon or one seed leaf inside of it, whereas dicots or sometimes called cutocots, they have two seed leaves inside, two carbidons, hence the name dicots. Some fundamental differences you'll notice is the root and stem. In the root of a monocot, the xylophome are in a ring in the center, whereas in a dicot, you have some kind of X of xylem and these dots of phloem kind of around in between, kind of tucked in between the arms. In a stem in monocots, they tend to be kind of disorganized, scattered looking vascular bundles, whereas in a dicot, they can be much more organized in a little kind of um, ring around the outside. The leaves of monocots have parallel veins, whereas the leaves on a dicot tend to be uh, have this kind of venation pattern, kind of a net-like pattern. The flowers of monocots tend to have petals in multiples of three, so three or six or nine uh, petals, whereas in dicots, maybe fours and fives. So maybe you can have five or 10, 15 or eight, 12, something like this. So the monocots and dicots, which will help you with the next task. So the next task is to analyze uh, microscope images, the skill for this lab, for this lab, for this lesson. So you'll see microscope images, I'm just showing you two pictures of it, um, and you're going to look and identify different vascular tissues in them. So you have to recognize the vascular bundles, the xylem, and the phloem. It's also good to know the ground tissue, the kind of the general tissue that the, those bundles of vascular tissue are within. Inside. So here's a diagram showing it very simply and clearly, and then here's the real pictures that are a little more complicated. Okay, the way I always think this to help me is that xylem is the center of the planet's universe. So here's the planet's universe, water is the center. Um, so water is the center, and therefore xylem is the center, and phloem is on the outside. So if I look here, the inner part here, contains xylem and the outer part has phloem. That little kind of analogy of water as the center of the planet's universe always helps me remember it. Okay, did it work for you? Maybe it won't, but it's worth it. Give it a try. So your task now is to identify the different vascular tissue structures inside of a variety of cross sections. So I'm going to give them to you in a digital image. Um, normally when you're in class, you look at a drill microscope and you will look at a microscope later. We can't do it now. Um, because this is a testable skill for the IB exam. So if you look at the document here, I'm going to post this as both a Word file and a PDF file. I've given you images, and you have to identify them, um, both the xylem and the phloem. So I've got xylem and phloem in each of the following slides. Okay, So you can do this by printing it and then writing on it by hand and taking a picture and uploading that to Schoology. Um, you can also do it digitally, so you can go into, if you're, let's say you're doing it in Word, you can go insert shape, insert a line, and you can go, okay, that one, that is xylem, let's say. You can identify and put a line there and then write in the text box xylem. You can do it for all of them. So this one, this one's the same, where this is a big picture, this is zoomed in. Big picture zoomed in. Those are both stems. And here I have roots, so big picture, big picture. Zoomed in, zoomed in. And then I have two mystery cross sections where you have to figure out for this one and for this one, is it a monocot or a dicot? Is it a stem or is it a root? And how do you know? It's a good chance for you to apply your skills. So what you need to upload for me to today to Schoology is just that document with the identification. It could be a picture of you printed it out and wrote on it, or it could be a digital image, just a PDF of what you chose to write on. If you're the seller lab, great. If you don't, at least make your predictions and make sure you, of course, take good notes on today's lesson. Okay, guys, I hope everyone's at home, staying safe, washing their hands, taking care of themselves and their family. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free, as always, to email me. Have a good one. Stay safe.